Claire wants to be the is winner. It me? Do I get to win? Can it's somebody not switch with me? You. You know Man. what though? You get to make a recipe with that. I will. <laughs> I will. I'll do it with my own hands, not without the help of electricity. How about some Yorkshire pudding, okay. shall we? It's hilarious. As we were setting this up, every single person here had a story about Yorkshire puddings. How really? their mum made them, how theirs always fail, how theirs are the best. Everybody has a story about Yorkshire puddings. I have no Yorkshire pudding story, so I can't wait could, to see what you do with this recipe. Could you make one up? Okay, I'll make one up. Okay. Mine always failed. Help okay, me. good. Okay, so Please. here's the thing. You need there's there's really only one and a half secrets to perfect Yorkshire puddings. Okay. The number one secret is the pan has to be hot. Mm. Okay, so we're doing individuals. They're going to look like little muffins in the end, these lovely beauties here. Mm -hmm. The pan goes into a 450 degree oven for like five, six, seven, eight minutes. Yeah. So it's hot. And what am I putting in there before I put it in the oven? I don't know. The fat. Mm. So the whole history of Yorkshire pudding is the pan would be underneath the joint and the, the beef fat would be dripping in and then you would pour in the batter, oh. okay? So, and then people would fill up on that so they didn't eat so much roast beef. Oh, That's got the old it. secret. So what you need to do is put the fat in the muffin tin mm -hmm. and then you put it in the oven. Okay. It's going to be screaming hot. You do not do this with your bare hands. No. Remember, you want to use your oven mitts. And then my other secret is I use suet. So suet okay. is beef fat. Yeah. Um, you get it everywhere at this time of year. It's in the freezer with like the turkeys and everywhere in the grocery store. Yeah. You put a half a teaspoonful. So it's solid like that. Yeah. Delicious. So full of flavor. Makes the best Yorkshire puddings. Once again, it's beef fat. Beef fat. It's going to do it every time. <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> so half a teaspoon in. They go into the oven. The pan is going in the oven. Meanwhile, well, you can make this earlier in the day. This is just milk, eggs, flour, and salt. So it's a really, really basic batter. Okay. Doesn't take a lot. And you can be as loosey-goosey with it as you want. You can make it in your brand new KitchenAid mixer <laughs> if you wanted to. I would be very jealous. And then you just, once the pan comes out, okay, remember, it's hot. You're using your oven mitts. Very hot. Very hot. And you just ladle in about halfway full. Okay. And then right back in the oven. As my mother always said, do not even look at the oven when mm -hmm. they're cooking. Open the oven, well, you may as well just go to bed. Yeah, because it's, it's done. It's ruined. And Don't get give puffy. it side eyes. And Don't you, pretend it's not there. That's right. And do that, that's the last thing you do. The and then is, you just take it out the in seven, eight minutes. The meat is being carved minutes. and you take them out, they take about 15 minutes to cook okay. and they're done and they're puffy and they're glorious. Okay. And then you fill them full Beautiful. of gravy. Now, meanwhile, the other amazing two sides that we have with this dinner are crispy roasted potatoes yes. and carrot and turnip mash, so carrot and rutabaga. Crispy roasted potatoes, what's the secret? What is it? Well, you cook your potatoes all the way through. Okay. So people think they can just throw the potatoes in with the roast beef and they're gonna get crispy. No dice. Cook them all the way through when the stove top boil mm -hmm. them. Then you give them a little bit of a... You dance with them. You shake. And what that does is it kind of loosens up the edges mm -hmm. and it gets a little bit starchy so that when you add a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. it soaks up into the potatoes. And then again, really hot oven. So when those are in at 450, these also want 450. And then they'll be crispy. Exactly. And it's perfect because your roast is resting for 45 mm. minutes while you do the potatoes this and the, the Yorkshire's. This is the timing that I never get I right. Know. I and, love that. And we always, with a big meal like this at Chatelaine, we always do a prep, prep, prep yes. plan for you. So no, it's either in the magazine or it's online or it's on the tablet. Now, so those are cooking away, salt and pepper. Okay. Carrot and turnip, the easiest side dish you'll ever make. Yes. I make this for almost any roast dinner because I can make it in the morning and then just reheat it in the microwave. Right. Do you remember our friend Rutabaga? Yes, this ugly guy. I know, and he's a, he, this whole thing probably costs 80 cents. Right. So Nice and cheap. Nice and cheap, half rutabaga, half carrot, boil it until it's soft, add some cream, some parsley, some salt and pepper, a little tiny scraping of fresh nutmeg. Nice. Any opportunity for me with fresh nutmeg, I love it. And it goes so beautifully with rutabaga. Yeah. And like I said, make it early in the day and then reheat it afterwards. Yeah. It really makes life easy. This is how we always, how Leo always makes the mashed potatoes <laughs> yes. for the kids. Yeah. He always puts a vegetable in there. Usually it's carrot. It's a great way to get some extra nutrients. My mom always did that too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a good delicious. way to do it. Okay, so there you have your whole meal. Your dinner is Unbelievably. done. Yeah, Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you. Yes. Have a good holiday. CityLine.ca so you can follow all of the recipes and she's right when she says Chatelaine breaks it down by oh, time yeah. which is great like it'll say 605 turn on the oven oh, I love that yeah.